and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Well, we're looking at it, we're looking at the next big innovation in that great crossover between Marvel and Capcom. But finally, they got their act together after X-Men vs. Street Fighter and Marvel uh, Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. This was where it was all leading to, Marvel vs. Capcom. This is where I would go as far as to say plot took a back seat. This is where suddenly they just chucked in as many different licensed characters as they could. Of course I'm referring more to Capcom here. They included people like Strider, Mega Man, um, Captain Commando, just loads and loads of Capcom characters from a whole bevy of games from all of their big, big licenses and chucked them all into this game. It was improved graphically over its predecessors. The combo system was improved. The crossover system. You, you had sub-characters that were non-playable that you could have helping you out. There was a whole different battle mode included. And, of course, g just generally, the game itself moved at a far, far greater pace. In terms of graphics, I don't know if any of you guys are out there familiar with the, the way these versus games changed, but this one was the far more mature-looking one. The graphics themselves were a little bit more grown up, a bit more shaded, and the, the actual moves themselves were a bit deeper too. Also, the popular game Darkstalkers, some of the key characters from that entire subcategory of games from Capcom were included in this too. That isn't to say that there isn't a lot more Marvel characters in this than before, but it was just the Marvel characters that made the cut on this were far more obscure characters that hadn't been featured before, such as Venom, um, a popular enemy of Spider-Man that's garnered more interest over time. On top of that, the last boss was far more Marvel-centric and more. But I've been rabbiting for long enough about this game. Let's get into the game, play a few rounds, and I'll give you some more of the facts later on in the trivia section. But here we are. This is a desktop here. Let's go with the old faithfuls we always go for in these videos. We've got Ryu, the, stand, the faithful from the Street Fighter lineup. And we're going to bung him together with Wolverine. Now, as you can see, the special partner... These are the people you can have helping you in the background. And the sheer range of people that are out there to help you is fantastic. Not just characters that were featured in X-Men Children of the Atom, like Sentinel, and Street Fighter characters that are featured in other Street Fighter games, but also people like Jubilee and, and Rose, and people like that are featured largely in the X-Men kind of canon of comics and cartoons. Now we're gonna go for easy mode, just because we're just going to make this interesting so I can talk over this. And speed-wise, we're gonna go with normal. But as you can see straight away, Mega Man and Jin. So two rather obscure. Oh, I wouldn't go as far as to say Mega Man's Ready. obscure. But here we are. So let's get in this. Now, if we press both medium buttons together, we've got there Jubilee helping us. Uh, again, a character I think that's kind of lost cachet over time um, in the Marvel Universe, kind of taken over by Rogue, featuring more and more in some of those X Men movies. But as for this. The versus uh, attacks are exactly as you would expect from the other games. Now we have a dual combo there, much easier to pull off now compared with the other games. And I feel sorry for Mega Man there who largely screwed up his versus there, his big old super move. But, uh, what a waste of a super. It's the one thing with auto mode, you will find that moves are pulled off pretty willy nilly. So let's let Wolverine have a bit of a go, shall we? So again, just like any of these popular versus uh, cross-genre games, as soon as you um, one of your characters dies, the other one leaps into the fray. But of course, you can bring them in whenever you like. So let's, um, of course, um, Wolverine's other popular super move was introduced into this, the kind of mental crazy stab. Let's see if we can get that performed. No, we didn't get a chance to perform it. Of course, if you miss that, you just wasted a super. Now, this was really kind of, for me, the big jump in these versus games. It was just, it felt more fluid. The backgrounds, particularly, were fantastic in Marvel vs. Capcom. This became the time when lots of stuff was being done to really cater to the audience, not just the player, get more people to pop in those pound coins. So Captain Commando, another relatively minor character, paired up with Morrigan, who's part of the Darkstalkers series. A lot of Darkstalkers characters did feature into the backup characters. Now, if I remember correctly, we should be able to utilise um, turning into Ken, um, Ken and Akuma. But I've totally forgotten how to do that. I believe it might be 
um, forward to back, but we'll find out in due course if that's possible. And here we are, now I am Akuma. The game had this, you know, we will mention this more in the trivia about secret characters, but the idea that while playing as Ryu, you could turn into the move subset of Ken or Akuma. So everything from the teleport move to uh, Akuma's own move, such as the air fireball combination. Do you know what? Let's give Wolverine a bit of air time, shall we? It's almost unfair, this fight. And there we go. See? Ryu there kicking out. So I say Ryu. We're going to call him Evil Ryu or Akuma. The game itself does play very, very well. Um, there are a few characters I kind of wish that were in it. This is one of those few games that could have done with some DLC. So straight away, back here, Venom. Popular enemy or in the Spider-Man universe. There's no denying it. Everyone knows. And I tried to be Ken there and it did not work out for me. So we'll have to try and get ourselves another energy bar to maybe try and see if I can prove that to you. But that was punishing there. So I think now is the time for Wolverine to make his appearance. Right now, things aren't going so hot for our hero, are they? This game was ported onto a number of different console systems too. And of course, uh, at the time of release, much like the release of Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter and X-Men vs. Street Fighter, there were problems with RAM and if your system didn't support enough, oh, I should have performed that closer. What a waste of Wolverine there. We've got Iceman backing us up. Let's let Iceman do a bit of work, shall we? And of course, based on the strength of the character, what they're capable of doing, the number of backups you can have do does differ. Let's see if this kicks can do some damage there. And we've got rid of Venom, finally. Now, do we have the... Oh no, do you know what? We better swap characters before I, a war machine. Because it's not Iron Man, of course. There we go. That's the enemy taking advantage of that wonderful backup system. And I do think it's time Wolverine took a step back. Because this fight could end very badly for me. Particularly because our adversary here is on a level 3. Oh dear. What a waste. Oh dear. Oh no. How are things going to go for our hero? Right, well as long as I get to block, we should be fine. And there we go. Do you know what? Let's pause that a second and start talking about the facts. Because let's face it, you want to learn today. This isn't just about watching me play. Now, the original Marvel vs. Capcom arcade game, otherwise known as Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes, not the superheroes, um, was released in January, uh, was released January 23rd, 1998. Uh, it was utilising the CP System 2 board, that popular board that we talk about a lot here on the channel. And that was the one that was utilised in Super Street Fighter and all the other Versus games. It was Capcom's more efficient board that made modding and mucking around with the game itself much, much harder. Um, and, you know, a copyright infringement, stuff like that. It was developed by Capcom, obviously, who at the time, they had that Marvel licence going for them. That said, Marvel has actually lost and regained... Oh, sorry, Capcom has lost and gained that Marvel game licence several times. They released Marvel vs. Capcom 1... Uh, you know, to you know, this game to relative success. It didn't win the public over quite as much as the others. However, in the East, it did insanely well. And kind of almost the entire backing of those sequels comes from the later games. Now, they lost the license, unfortunately, after the release of Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and that was in 2002, to a lot of people's disappointment. So when people were demanding and just shouting for a follow-up to Marvel vs. Capcom 1, they eventually got their wish when um, Capcom got the Marvel license back in 2010 and they released Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I think it was Jewel of something or other. Um, but again, they lost it again because of Disney buying um, that whole Marvel license and it became a problem. They had their entire Disney Infinity game in mind to utilise that license, something they abandoned 
and have sold the license back to Capcom in 2016, which brought us again Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity. So they've just abandoned the numerical system of numbers entirely. And of course, that's going to be released this year, 2017, on a multitude of platforms. Um, once, as already alluded to in this, this has more secret characters than any of the previous Versus games. It had, obviously, uh, the secret versions as seen of uh, Akuma and Ken. There was Gold War Machine. I've never heard of that. Maybe you can tell me about it in the comments. I've never heard of him, who wasn't Iron Man. We had Lilith uh, one of the with Morrigan, one of the characters from the Darkstalker series. Orange Hulk, not a clue who that was. Red Venom, or as, you know, let's face it, they were trying to recreate the character Carnage there. Shadow Lady, not a clue who that was. It was a darkened version of the Lilith Morrigan character. And of course, Ken and Akuma that we talked about. There was another secret character as well. And I say a secret character because he was it's actually in the coding. It was a character called Tomichin. I've never seen it personally, but Tomichin was invented by one of the game's developers. Um, he was a, par a parody of another a designer known as Atsushi Tomirita. Um, he worked on the game very early uh, in the Marvel vs. Capcom 1 development cycle, and he happened just to look like Bert from Sesame Street. So they copied that. You can Google this, Google image, it's all there. Um, and his sprites um, were buried in the game's um, booklets and in some of the game's original coding uh, with the arcade version that arrived. Uh, there's a fake move list as well. Once again, that's available to find online. And he had a move, a super move called I'm Sorry I Forgot, which presumably was a dig at maybe his production uh, in the entire development cycle. And finally, the entire idea of the characters fighting each other in this manner. And that does include X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter. All of them throw back to Street Fighter Alpha. At the end of Street Fighter Alpha 1, there's actually a mode called Dramatic Battle Mode. I've talked about this before. And it's the ability to have Ken and Ryu face off against Bison. So it's two characters, one played by AI and the other one by you, or you and your mate on different controllers, up against an AI M. Bison who has some enhanced moves. Now this was kind of a nod to the popular manga based Street Fighter the movie uh, with Guile and Ken being, oh sorry, Ryu being the chief characters in that, but great manga, cannot recommend it enough. After this video, find it, great movie, Amazon. I'll try and put a link in the comments uh, to where you can uh, get it online. You will have to pay for it, be legal, but. Um, that dramatic battle mode was so popular and it was so sought after that it became the basis for those versus games. So you can thank the entire genre of this tag team um, system by Capcom to that one battle mode that again was, a, 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 was just a homage to the movie. So that's some other facts about this game. Let's get back into the game, shall we? Um, now, I hope... A number of you watching this game, when you first played it, this game, it was in the arcade and not the console version. Because as I mentioned, the console versions of this game made a real point of not arriving with... Um, let's have a look. There you go. Sorry about that, Chung Lee, but you blocked it anyway. The console version of this game, be it the PlayStation 1, the Saturn version, all of these different versions didn't have enough RAM to let you swap characters. Consequently... It kind of one of the main reasons people played these games was remove. Oh come on, don't block this one. She is doing a too good a job blocking these super moves. I can you can go off a person, Chungus. You know, let's let Wolverine have a go. Now again, I know I mentioned it already on the channel, but look at those backgrounds. Up until this point, because the backgrounds were good in previous games, there's no denying it, they were very good indeed. But they just weren't as good as this. Chung Lee has blocked every super move, and quite frankly, she's starting to get on my nerves. Don't get me wrong, I must have given her half a year to get out of that last move. But right now, Chung Lee has nearly wiped out my entire team here. Now let's see if we can pin this guy. And he tech hit it out of that one. Oh no, we've got another blocker. Oh dear, that's over. Oh no, wait, it's not over yet. 
Oh no, that's got to be. Spinning explosive pile driver. That's got game over it and all over it. See if we can get him with this one. Oh no, he's not getting me with that one. Let's have a look. Oh no. See, th again, once again, this is the problem with auto mode. And we're over. Do you know, I think I'm going to end the video there. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any other recommendations of games that you want to see on the channel, please let me know and pop it down there in the comments. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you, I hope you learned a little thing today about Marvel vs. Capcom. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. So, thanks for watching and cheerio.